the year 1960, the Soviet Union completed their first nuclear submarine in the port city of Murmansk. The submarine was called the K-19. The submarine had a length of 374 feet, a top speed of 26 knots, and weighed 5,000 tons when submerged. The K-19 submarine was armed with three ballistic nuclear missiles, each one with a 1.4 megaton warhead. The range of these missiles was 400 miles. Two 70 megawatt pressurized water reactors powered the K-19. For these reactors to function properly, they require constant high pressure in the primary coolant loop. These reactors use 20% enriched uranium-235 to start their nuclear reactions. In this reaction, a single neutron is absorbed by the uranium-235, creating uranium-236, which is highly unstable. Thus, the uranium-236 violently breaks apart into barium-142, krypton-91, and three neutrons. This split creates heat that is used to make steam, which then fuels the submarine while endlessly continuing the chain reaction, creating more and more neutrons with each absorption. On June 18, 1961, Captain Satayev and his crew left port to stage a war game, with the K-19 playing the role of a U.S. submarine attacking the motherland. The event was successful, and the sub is ordered home after being at sea for two weeks. On July 4th at 4.15 a.m., while making its return more than 1,500 miles from Russia, the reactor temperature begins to rise substantially with no warning, and a rupture in the primary coolant loop is found. Control rods are fully inserted, however they cause no change in temperature. in the primary circuit on the after reactor. Check the other sensors. Confirm lots of pressure, Lieutenant. Let me through, watch out! We've got a leak! Give me the emergency manual. Come on! Lieutenant, I noticed the pumps were drawing too much power during the turbine test. But I didn't think it was serious. Out of my way! Hey. Move! Yeah. Control rods are dropping, Lieutenant. Auxiliary pumps. Auxiliary pumps. The auxiliary pumps aren't working either. Recycle them! I have, but the pressure keeps dropping. Confirm. But the rods will cool it, right? No! They can't control the reaction by themselves. They need coolant. Lieutenant, the core temperature is at 400 degrees and rising. Cut equalization! Captain Satayev orders the submarine to surface and discovers the ship's radio antenna is broken. With no radio or secondary emergency cooling systems, the crew is forced to fix the reactors by themselves or face a meltdown. Eight men jerry-rig a water pipe to a cut-off air vent valve to supply water to the overheating reactors in compartment 6. The chemical suits they wear are insufficient to protect them from the debilitating amounts of radiation. They exit, vomiting, faces red and swollen. These men are constantly sent back into compartment 6 to, sto to stop leaks in the new coolant system and fix bursting valves. As sailors are sent in and out of the reactor's compartment, more and more radioactive steam seeps into the submarine's ventilation system and slowly begins contaminating other compartments. We don't have radiation suits. The warehouse is out. They sent us chemical suits instead. They might as well wear raincoats. Temperature 
925 degrees. At 8 o'clock, four hours into the crisis, Captain Zaitov orders southern coordinates, hoping to find the Soviet diesel-powered submarines supposedly in the area. The K-19 turns down help from the nearby American warships and picked up their low-power distress signal. After eight hours of searching, the K-19 is ordered north. The K-19 rendezvous with the Soviet S-270, and non-essential crew are evacuated, leaving 60 men on board the K-19. The S-270 is unable to tow the largest nuclear submarine. They must wait for another submarine. The K-19's reactor has cooled. However, it is highly contaminated. It is, a, it is another 10 hours before the last crew members are, leave the K-19. When the K-19 arrives at the port of Polyarni, two days later, no precautions are taken, contaminating everything within 770 yards of the sub. The K-19 earned a reputation as Hiroshima. The eight men who worked on the K-19's failing reactors suffered from radiation poisoning and were grossly deformed. They died within days of docking. Fourteen more sailors died in the next two years. The remaining 117 suffered various effects of radiation and related illness. Why did the primary coolant loop of the nuclear reactors break? The official answer was that an electrical conductor, used during construction, had fallen into the cooling circuit. However, others suggest that upon initial startup, the reactors had no pressure gauges and were subjected to pressures of 400 atmospheres, more than double their limit. The incident was supposedly not reported to prevent the costly examination of the pipes and to keep Captain Zatayev's career record clean. The K-19 disaster remained a state secret for almost 30 years, hidden from the world. However, the most chilling aspect of this story is the environmental dangers that may still lurk. The Cold War is long over and most of these submarines have been decommissioned, yet the question of how the nuclear material was disposed still remains. In the end, the K-19 is the radioactive legacy of a rushed Soviet building program and was just one of the many nuclear accidents that occurred during the Cold War.